Welcome in everybody to this Bleacher Report live stream. I'm your host, Michael Darcy. And over the course of the next 25 to 30 minutes, I'm going to go over some of the biggest breakout players during the Kansas City Chiefs 2023 training camp, you know, offseason. Uh, we've made it through the uh, dreaded offseason. It's already late July. The Chiefs won the Super Bowl back in February, and we are only, I think, less than seven weeks until football begins. So it's a great time to be a Kansas City Chiefs fan. The Chiefs are coming off of a Super Bowl 57 victory against the Philadelphia Eagles. Times are good, and the Chiefs are, you know, loading up to potentially go back and do the whole damn thing again. So over the course of the next 30 minutes, I wanted to talk about some of the biggest breakout players in training camp. We've got some training camp news to discuss because it wouldn't be training camp without injuries and contract holdouts and negotiations. So um, I'm pretty excited to get into that and you know, I wanted to st start off this uh, live stream by talking about Chris Jones. Chris Jones has failed to report the training camp. You know, he's waiting for a new contract. Um, this is a little bit concerning to Chiefs fans because they're just kind of like, okay, like, is he going to play at all this season? And guys, I do think he's going to play this season. I do think he's going to report to Chiefs training camp this season uh, because if he doesn't, he's going to get fined fifty thousand dollars a day uh, until he does report. So. I think it's only a matter of time, but I do think he wants that new contract. And if we look back at, you know, some of the defensive tackles that got paid over the course of the offseason, uh, Quinn and Williams just got re-signed by the Jets to a four-year, $96 million contract. And so that's going to make the Chris Jones asking price a little bit more. So the Chris Jones contract holdout is going to be something to watch very closely. But for this live stream, I wanted to talk about some of the players that I think have a chance of exploding onto the scene in training camp and just guys that I've been paying very close attention to. And the first guy that we're going to talk about, unfortunately, has been in the news a lot recently. And that guy is Kadarius Tony. And Kadarius Tony has been in the news for the wrong reasons. Uh, he had an off-season surgery to fix some stuff in his knee. And I didn't actually know about this until Andy Reid talked about it earlier on in camp. But um, Kadarius Tony had off-season surgery to kind of fix his meniscus issue. Well, just a couple days ago, he got hurt fielding a punt, a same similar knee issue. And uh, actually, Andy Reid told reporters at training camp that a couple days ago, Kadarius Tony went underneath uh, surgery to fix some cartilage damage in his meniscus and to uh, kind of clear some of that stuff up. So not great for Kadarius Tony, because I think that a lot of chiefs fans really believe that he was going to be the number one wide receiver going into this 2023 campaign. And there's still a chance that he makes a you know speedy recovery because they're able to catch it pretty early on in camp. But I think that he's going to miss most of training camp. He's going to at least, you know, miss in, in, until the third or fourth preseason, I guess, third preseason game. But I think Kadarius Tony will probably be coming back around week one. Maybe he's going to, maybe he misses week one. I'm not really sure. I mean, if we look at Kadarius Tony's injury past, uh, he's got some injury problems and specifically in the lower legs and hamstrings and knees. And that is concerning for a guy that has been projected to be our number one wide receiver this year. Yikes. Yikes. Uh, so I'm going to look at the chat right now. I'm incorrect. A guy that we're going to maybe talk about later in the stream after some of the players initially. Um, Isaiah Pacheco had a surgery done two weeks after the Super Bowl to fix a torn labrum in his shoulder. So my bad on that. But Kadarius Tony did have surgery just a couple days ago uh, to fix some stuff in his knee. So Kadarius Tony's a guy that I think when he's healthy, when he's on the football field, he's going to be really special to watch. We saw what he was like. In Super Bowl 57, that punt return, he doesn't make that play. The Chiefs might not win this game. So Kadarius Tony is like catching lightning in a bottle, but it really is going to be important that he's on the football field, you know, come the regular season. And I think that's been the biggest knock by not only Chiefs fans, but really Giants fans when he was on the Giants is that Kadarius Tony just was not reliable. So I think that, you know, if Kadarius Tony can be healthy and stay healthy, he is your easy number one wide receiver. And I know a lot of people are saying, you know, the Chiefs missed out on DeAndre Hopkins because he just signed a uh, a two-year, $26 million contract with the Tennessee Titans, $32 million potentially after incentives. The Chiefs were very smart to not make that contract. But they were also assuming that Kadarius Toney was going to be able to stay healthy. And right now we can't assume that. So Kadarius Toney is a guy that I'm really going to be watching come 
end of training camp to see his health status and just kind of see where he's at. Because I think that if he's on the football field, the Chiefs are going to have a really good chance to do something special in this wide receiver group. The second guy that I wanted to talk about was Sky Moore. Sky Moore, in his first year in an Andy Reid offense, he wasn't great. He, I think a lot of Chiefs fans expected him to be better than he was. Uh, he only had like 20-something receptions. Um, so he didn't really get that much of a sample size. I know where he really struggled was in the uh, return game. He was really bad in the return game. And it kind of left Chiefs fans saying, Dave Tobe, what are we doing right now? Like he was just blowing it seemingly every other play. And I think that, you know, the Sky Moore um, punt return and kick return stuff, it got better on later in the season. If you remember that AFC championship game where the Chiefs needed somebody to make a play, uh, Sky Moore was able to return that punt, and I think he got to like the 40, and it set the Chiefs up to go on and kick the game-winning field goal. So stuff like that is, you know, what the potential that Sky Moore has. But going into his second season in the Chiefs uniform, you're not going to have guys in front of you. Juju Smith-Schuster isn't going to be here anymore. Kadarius Toney, the guy that we just talked about, he might not be able to stay healthy. And so I think that if Sky Moore can stay healthy, he might be primed for a really big role in this offense in 2023. And especially because we're going to talk about it later on in the list. Uh, there's another guy that I think could be, you know, explosive and could be another option, but you just can't guarantee it. Sky Moore paid his dues. He's been in this system. And I think that's really beneficial because Andy Reid never uses first year wide receivers the way that we think he, that he should. And it's just because there's a lot to learn. Andy Reid runs a complex offensive scheme and it's just not something that he feels comfortable giving entirely to a rookie right off the bat. And I still, I still think that Sky Moore had a pretty productive rookie season. He wasn't, you know, amazing, but I think that, you know, you saw something there that makes you feel comfortable or at least semi comfortable with this Chiefs wide receiver core going forward. So I think that, you know, with, you know, guys like Kadarius Tony out and Juju Smith Schuster no longer here. You know, Sky Moore could be on the verge of a really big 2023 season, and I'm excited for it because he's got all the talent. I think, you know, we saw it in that Super Bowl when he got his first touchdown of the season. There's something there, and it's just going to be fun to see, you know, what we have in Sky Moore. The third guy is a recent acquisition that the Chiefs picked up earlier this offseason, and that is a former Giants wide receiver, Richie James. Richie James is a very interesting, you know, cam candidate. Because last year, he had 569 total yards with four touchdowns, and he's 27 years old. So this is kind of a guy that I see similarly to Marquez Valdez-Scantling, where, you know, he never really exploded onto the scene with his former team. But, you know, give him to Patrick Mahomes. Give Patrick Mahomes another weapon, a guy with a lot of talent, and you never know what he could do. MBS for not really ever, you know, catching on in Green Bay. He was all right, but he wasn't, you know, MBS, the guy that was making playoff catches. And, and he was the only receiver in the AFC championship game last year that was able to make plays because everybody else got hurt. I, I, I think that Richie James in this offensive scheme with Patrick Mahomes as your quarterback, I, I really do think that they're going to have a chance to, to do something special. Now, I, I think that it's worth noting that Richie James – played in a system ran by Mike Kafka. Mike Kafka, former Chiefs quarterback coach, you know, he went over to the Giants and he's been really successful over there. Uh, I, I think that is worth noting. So the Chiefs are taking a chance on a guy that kind of has some ties with uh, some former coaches. So that's interesting. But Richie James is very uh, intriguing because you don't really know what you're going to get. I've seen some Chiefs fans think that he's not going to make the team. Um, I'm fairly certain he's going to make the team the question is going to be where he's going to slot in at that wide receiver depth core because we'll, we'll talk about it a little later on in the stream the Chiefs have a lot of really solid options at wide receiver they obviously don't have that number one guy they don't have a DeAndre Hopkins they don't have a a number one wide receiver that's a guaranteed thousand yards but you have Travis Kelsey and Travis Kelsey's the best tight end in the NFL. So they're treating Travis Kelsey like he's your number one wide receiver. And we're just going to figure out the other guys to kind of supplement what Travis Kelsey does. So the Chiefs don't have a number one wide receiver. But when you got guys like Sky Moore and Richie James and the guy that we're going to talk about here next, I think they just assume that they can supplement that production just in different ways. I think they're going to 
try to do their best at spreading the wealth. I mean, I remember last year, uh, Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes were like, you never know who's going to get it on any given week. It's going to be a nightmare for fantasy owners because a different guy is going to get the ball every single week. And the Chiefs, you know, have only added the weapons. They might not have, you know, the same caliber of weapons that they had last year, but now they have more of them. And we're going to talk about a couple more of them here in a second. So, like I said, we were talking about some of the wide receivers and where they slot in. In my opinion, the biggest question mark out of the wide receiver group, which is worth noting, is a second round draft pick in the 2023 NFL draft, Rasheed Rice. Rasheed Rice is a very interesting guy to talk about because I have no clue what we're going to get from him. And I don't think it has anything to do with his skill level, his talent. Uh, He's a a bigger wide receiver. He's kind of like a Juju Smith-Schuster type replacement. He's a guy that can go up and get your jump balls. And, you know, he's really good at, you know, uh, making contested catches, but not so great at getting separation. But if you look at it, I mean, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid don't really run a jump ball style offense. It's kind of like, okay, get out open in space. We're going to throw you the ball and you're just going to get tremendous yards after the carry. You know, I I think that we haven't really seen a a true jump ball wide receiver, a guy that, you know, you just say, you know what, I'm going to throw it up there. You're going to go get it. And Rasheed Rice has already been making some headlines early on in the training camp. He's made some contested catches. He's burned some cornerbacks. But I would expect that in training camp when you're playing guys that, you know, aren't going to be on the final 53. So Rasheed Rice has been really good in training camp so far, which is important, is worth noting, because training camp is where you can kind of separate yourself from some of the other wide receivers and other talent on the roster. And Rasheed Rice has done that so far. Now, one thing that is worth noting is Andy Reid in the draft process was talking about how Rasheed Rice might have to get up to speed with conditioning. And I didn't really think much of it during the time, but Rasheed Rice actually had trouble uh, uh, throwing up early on in training camp, which I think kind of just shows you how brutal um, Andy Reid run training camps are and how insane it is. But uh, I I do think that once the conditioning gets there with Rasheed Rice, we're going to be okay. But until then, we're just going to kind of have to wait and see how he develops on in camp. Um, But I'm pretty excited for it because if he does – you know, what I think we should expect him to do. And that's just be a a quality option for Patrick Mahomes. I don't expect him to have any crazy numbers. Uh, my projected numbers for him are like three to 400 yards. Sky Moore was just underneath that last year. And a lot of Chiefs fans were kind of disappointed with his performance. But I think if you look at it like this, again, Andy Reid with first year wide receivers isn't going to give them a big workload. But the reason that I have Rasheed Rice getting more yards than um, a guy like Sky Moore is because I think the Chiefs are more desperate right now. The Chiefs are without Kadarius Tony. The Chiefs don't have Juju Smith-Schuster like I've stated early on in this live stream. The Chiefs need other guys to step up in the wide receiver room. And I think that Rasheed Rice might have to play out of necessity. It is important that they get something from these you know, wide receivers that are maybe three or four on the depth chart. But it's crucial that you get production from Rasheed Rice because you don't really have anybody else. Um, A couple names in the chat, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, like Justin Ross or John Ross, we'll get to it. But the next player that I want to talk about, kind of shifting away from the wide receivers, because this guy, I would argue, has had maybe the most hype out of all of the players during training camp, and that is running back Daenerik Prince. And Daenerik Prince is a UDFA coming out of Tulsa, This guy's very interesting because a lot of people um, are kind of comparing him to Isaiah Pacheco. He's a guy that exploded during training camp, and you kind of just knew that he had that it factor. If you watch him run, guys, he is so incredibly fun to watch. He's fast. He's physical. He's really good in between the tackles. One thing that I've noticed is that he's really good in the uh, pass catching game, which Pacheco is too. But if you could have a one-two combo of Isaiah Pacheco and Daenerik Prince, that would be crazy to watch. And I've seen some of the drills that they've put him through during camp. And, you know, he looks like he's in really good shape. Uh, I would hope that he is. But he looks pretty good on the tape. We're going to have to see how he does, you know, in the uh, seven-on-sevens and running with the ones. But I really do think that the Chiefs might have something with Daenerik Prince. Something about undrafted running backs or something about late-round running backs or just running backs in general the Chiefs are always able to find guys 
that are quality and that can do the do the job. And Daenerys Prince is interesting because Dave Tobe compared him to a, a former chief in Nile Davis in his uh, kick returning skills. And I think that if Daenerys Prince can work his way up the depth chart by you know taking over maybe for Isaiah Pacheco on special teams duties. That's how he's going to make this roster. And right now, I mean, he doesn't have a guaranteed roster spot. I would say that everybody outside of Daenerys Prince on this, you know, breakout players list is all but guaranteed a roster spot. They're going to make the team. But Daenerys Prince is the biggest question mark. He is going to have to fight against guys. You know, I think if we look at the running back roster right now, you got Isaiah Pacheco, Jarek McKinnon, Clyde edwards Lair, and Daenerys Prince. And I think that, Daenerys Prince should get the cut over Clyde edwards Lair. We kind of know what Clyde edwards Lair is at this point, but you get into football politics and you get into, you know, Clyde edwards Lair was drafted uh, in the first round and he we put so much into him and we can't afford to, you know, put him on the practice squad or not bring him back over a UDFA from Tulsa who hasn't shown anything in the league yet. And sometimes that's the unfortunate part is you kind of get caught up in that game. But Daenerys Prince is going to have a really good chance to make this roster. And guys, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the nod over Clyde edwards Lair. I think at this point, we know what Clyde is. We, we know what he is. We know what he's going to be. There is no, you know, untapped potential. Clyde edwards Lair is done. Daenerys Prince isn't. He's fresh. He's new. He's young. He's got something. And the Chiefs are maybe intrigued at what he could potentially bring to this team. So that's why I think Daenerys Prince is a, a breakout player to watch in training camp, and I definitely think we should watch him during the um, uh, during the preseason games because that's when we see guys who maybe be on the bubble, they start to make some noise, and that's where they kind of earn their stripes. And you can also watch the preseason games and kind of see by how much they're playing certain guys, how they feel about where they're going to stack up and how, you know, okay, he's running with the ones. He's playing a lot in the first quarter. He's going to play some pretty substantial snaps come regular season time. So, I mean, if we look back, Isaiah Pacheco ran a lot with the ones last year at training camp, ran with the ones during the preseason games. Look how that ended up. So I, I do think that you can't uh, uh, you can't not put stock into where a player is running with and what team they're playing on. But uh, it'll be interesting to watch because I think that Daneric Prince definitely has something to offer. And I'm just intrigued to see what he's got. So a couple other players that weren't on my breakout players list that I wanted to talk about. We're Justin and John Ross, the Ross brothers, so to speak. They're not brothers, but uh, the Chiefs have two Rosses. They're going to be fighting for a position, for a spot at wide receiver. I know the chat's kind of going crazy for it right now. Talk about Justin Ross. Talk about the Rosses. Here's the thing. The Chiefs are going to be in a tough position because they're only going to take six wide receivers. I would be surprised if they took seven. They're just not going to take more than six. Um, if they're going to take four tight end, or maybe not four tight ends, but like if they're going to take tight ends and they're going to take they have to take three running backs and that's when we kind of get into the whole you know is it going to be Daneric Prince or Clyde edwards Lair? I think they're going to take six wide receivers and if we go over the Chiefs wide receiver depth chart so to speak I'm not here to argue about where they slot in in terms of you know skill level or what they're going to be this is not where I think they actually are, I'm just going over, you know, the six spots or the five spots that I think are locked up. I think Kadarius Tony is locked up. I think Sky Moore is locked up. I think Richie James is locked up. I think Rasheed Rice, that's four. Throw Marquez Valdez Scantling in there, that's five. Five of the six are completely filled. They're locked. Now, a guy that I think could get the nod over a Justin Ross or a John Ross is um a uh, guy like Justin Watson. Justin Watson last year kind of flew onto the scene and made some big time plays in the regular season. Uh, he burned JC Jackson in week two for that touchdown over the top, but Justin Watson might get the nod over a Justin Ross or over a John Ross. So it's going to be interesting to see how that battle works because do the chiefs say, you know what, Justin Ross, you're finally healthy. We've waited all this time. You're healthy. And he might get the nod just because of the potential that he has coming out of Clemson. I mean, guys, if he didn't have that back injury, he would have been a top 10 pick. He's that good at the sport of football, but I really am concerned about, you know, his durability. If we're talking about how we're concerned about Kadarius, Tony, 
Justin Ross cannot stay healthy. And last year when all the Chiefs fans were getting crazy about, you know, his potential and what he could potentially be, he got hurt. He had like, I think he broke his foot and had surgery on it. So I'm not really big on the Justin Ross hype train just because I don't think he's going to be healthy and a player's durability and availability is the best ability. So I'm not exactly sold on Justin Ross quite yet. I want to see him, like this comment says, play with the pads on. Until the pads come on, I mean, it's a glorified practice. Put the pads on. I want to see what these guys can do in live contact situations. Uh, John Ross is very interesting. Former Bengals player. A guy that was picked before Patrick Mahomes. Um, The Bengals picked him, I believe it was in that 2018 class. And he set the combine record with uh, the 40 time. He's really fast. He can fly. He never caught on in Cincinnati, and he's kind of been all over the place since then. I think the Chiefs are trying to harness something that, you know, maybe they can, maybe they can't, but John Ross is on this team right now because he can fly. That is why he's on this roster. Um, It'll be interesting to see because John Ross has more experience than Justin Ross, and probably you could argue has more experience than Justin Watson, but I'm not sure if he gets the nod at wide receiver over those two guys. Um, chat, what do you guys think? Is John Ross better than having, you know, Justin Watson or Justin Ross on the team? I'm not too sure. Um, if I'm leaning as to uh, which player I think should get that sixth wide receiver spot, it probably should go to Justin Watson. And the only reason I say that is because I'm more confident about his durability and availability. And with Justin Ross, you just can't be sure. And until you know, we have a better idea on his health status and if he can stay healthy, you can't rely on him. And the way that I feel about Justin Ross is uh, very different than a lot of Chiefs fans. I was pretty harsh on Frank Clark. Uh, I didn't really have any expectations for Frank Clark because he always found a way to uh, go under the bar and, you know, make me disappointed with how he performed. So I just stopped caring and stopped having expectations for Frank Clark because once you set expectations, then you get disappointed if they don't you know, meet those expectations. So I don't really have expectations for Justin Ross, but I'm also not hating. I would love to see him make this team because you know the raw talent, the athleticism, the, the skill is there. The question is going to be, can he do it consistently? Consistently, that's the question. And I don't think that he can, but again, I would love to be proven wrong. If I'm wrong, the Chiefs have a quality wide receiver that can just help Patrick Mahomes and this offense, you know, function better. I hope he's good. I have no reason for him to be bad, but I am worried about Justin Rawson and his health status. So Chiefs Kingdom, this is a very interesting time because the Chiefs have so many, you know, question marks in the wide receiver group. And I know this, this Bleach Report live stream is called the biggest breakout players of Chiefs training camp. And while I think that most of the guys we talked about in the wide receiver core are candidates to break out, I think the wide receiver core was such a good topic to talk about because right now that's kind of where the most question marks are. Uh, And that's where the most concern lies among Chiefs Kingdom outside of the whole Chris Jones contract holdout. Uh, I think the wide receiver core has been maybe the biggest topic, you know, all offseason long, especially with DeAndre Hopkins because everybody's like, oh, the Chiefs are going to get D-Hop. The Chiefs are going to, you know, finally get that number one wide receiver. But I just, I wasn't very upset with them missing the boat on uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I think that the Titans, you overpaid for a guy that has had, you know, steroids. He's been busted for steroids and he's had nagging injuries. So I wouldn't have felt comfortable giving him a two-year $26 million contract, potentially $32 million after all the incentives. I would not have felt very comfortable if the Chiefs did that. And I, I think that right now, while they might not have a number one wide receiver, they might not have a guy that can go out and get you 1,200 yards like DeAndre Hopkins could, but you've got guys that have talent. They just haven't, you know, they haven't shown anything um, in terms of numbers. Right now, the Chiefs are betting, they're betting a lot on these young wide receivers being able to produce at a high level. And that's also, they're not just betting on these wide receivers. They're betting on Patrick Mahomes being able to elevate the guys around him. And in my opinion, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. One of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen. He's going to be able to elevate the guys around him. And that's, you know, not a concern of mine because Patrick Mahomes has always shown that he can pick up the guys around him. Byron Pringle a couple of years ago, guys, you know, Byron Pringle, an undrafted free agent from Kansas State, 
We were talking about him potentially being a number two wide receiver. He left in free agency, went to the Bears. I don't even know if he's playing anymore. So I think it just goes to show you that with Patrick Mahomes, anything is possible. He can work with less and you'll be just okay. So I'm really excited to see what these guys can do. I'll be projecting and, and you know giving more stats uh, in the future about what I think these guys could do once we get closer towards the season. But it's really, you know, something to watch because right now training camp is buzzing. You know, it's very interesting. I I think there was like 30,000 people out in St. Joseph, Missouri to watch the team play, uh, which is a lot. (laughs) I've been out to training camp. That's a lot of people in not that big of a space. So the hype and the buzz is surrounding this team right now, as it should be. They're the defending and reigning Super Bowl champions. And uh, I definitely think that with these wide receivers, as long as, you know, you can get guys to step up, they're going to have a really good chance to go deep into the postseason and potentially run this whole thing back. So for Michael Darcy, uh, that has been my Bleacher Report live stream, my biggest breakout players of Chiefs training camp. If you like the content, definitely uh, like this live stream. Also go check me out on YouTube, KC Sports Report. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter and Instagram at the Michael Darcy. Uh, I post Chiefs content. I cover it both nationally and locally in Kansas City. So if you enjoyed my takes, enjoyed my thoughts, Uh, definitely go follow me on all my social media platforms and check me out on YouTube at KC Sports Report. So you guys just listened to the biggest breakout players of Kansas City Chiefs training camp in 2023 presented by Bleacher Report.